It seems like you guys really enjoy these personal tech videos based on the views, so thank you for that. And honestly, I enjoy making them just as much. Which is why today I brought another topic that hits hard for anyone who remembers it. 2021, the year the gaming industry was basically starving. GPUs completely vanished from stores, shelves were empty, and building a PC felt impossible without a graphics card. People were literally camping outside Micro Center just to get one. That year was brutal for PC builders, some GPUs were priced higher than actual cars, and I still remember building a PC during that chaos. Today we're talking about one of the biggest chip shortages in tech history, how almost every part of the tech world struggled, what caused it, how we eventually got out of it, and of course how I somehow managed to build a PC in the middle of all that. Now let's get started. 2021 was the year the world was still dealing with COVID-19. A lot of industries were either shut down or running at their absolute limits. Companies had fewer workers, everything moved online, and honestly, the world was basically still in lockdown. It wasn't as crazy as early 2020, but things definitely weren't back to normal yet. Everyone needed some kind of device to work or study from home. People discovered new remote jobs, new ways to earn money, and realized they could actually live better without sitting in an office. And because of that, everyone rushed to buy electronics. Laptops, webcams, cameras, smartphones, PCs, literally anything that had a chip inside it. And companies that produced chips struggled a lot because of the intensity of buyers. As you probably know, there are only two companies that produce most chips. And those are the Taiwanese company TSMC and the South Korean Samsung. These companies produce around 70% of chips for tech products, and every electronic device needs chips. Because of the lockdown, logistics were in trouble. Some countries closed their borders, airlines were at their limits, shipping across the ocean was difficult because some channels were closed. In general, while everyone was wearing masks, companies were also struggling with logistics and shortages of workers because of the lockdowns. And because people wanted to work online, that created massive demand for electronics and created a lot of pressure. But that wasn't the only issue. As people wanted to earn more money, there was also the problem of unemployment because many people lacked skills. And humans by nature don't want to put in effort to learn. They would rather find an easier method. That's why online crypto earnings exploded. The pandemic pushed people into crypto. Because of that, new hyped areas appeared, like the NFT market, where people made massive transactions in crypto. Investors saw a new New opportunity and started buying a crypto. And companies like Tesla made it possible to pay with Bitcoin. Elon Musk even tweeted that Bitcoin was good, which made Bitcoin rise suddenly and massively. And that caused other coins to rise too. And one of those coins changed the market completely. That coin was Ethereum. And that's when GPUs went into shortage. As I said earlier, chips are the most important part of every electronic system. We need chips for everything, and I mentioned that everyone wanted to earn money online using electronics. That sounds harmful, right? NFTs, crypto explosions, and all that. But in reality, there was one field that suddenly unlocked after years. Crypto mining. You see, for transactions of ordinary currency like dollars or euros, you need powerful machines that are mostly stored in banks, like central banks. And they verify your account, the sender's name, and all the usual stuff. That's why your bank always takes commissions, because you're using their services. To send your money to someone far away, you need banking services anyway. And that's why commissions exist. But how do you transact cryptocurrency? There are no banks, no system, and no company controlling it. How do you actually send money to someone else? And where does the power come from? That's where people help each other. That's where the field called crypto mining exists. Crypto mining is the process of validating transactions and adding them to the blockchain to earn rewards in the form of new coins. In simple terms, there are people who make your crypto transactions possible. Those people are called miners. But the thing is, to do that, you need a powerful server. And because they help verify your transactions, they get paid in crypto commissions. People call those servers crypto farms. To build them, you need several video cards, one server processor, a big cooling system, one RAM stick and a PCU strong enough to handle multiple GPUs, sometimes 10 or more at the same time. And after building that farm, you turn it on 24-7 and live your life while your farm makes money for you from people's transactions. And trust me, at the beginning of 2021, there was a gold rush for miners because of the reasons I mentioned before. And that's why there was a GPU massacre, because GPUs were the main power processors for generating Ethereum coins. Miners ordered video cards massively, and the demand was insane. Some people 
bought GPUs like crazy. 300 to 400 pieces of RTX 30 series or AMD RX 500 series right after launch. And if we also consider the chip shortage caused by lockdowns, it created huge pressure for companies like Samsung and TSMC. I remember the launch of the RTX 30 series and AMD RX 6000 series at that time. When the world was fighting for every GPU, the carts launched at the end of the 2020. And even at launch, they were about 27% more expensive than MSRP. Later, they became even more expensive every day. I remember when they reached 200% more than the retail price in May 2021. So imagine the RTX 3090 launched at $1,500 and by May 2021 it went up to $4,500 for one GPU. And even $1,500 was already considered expensive because the RTX 2080 a year earlier was only $700 MSRP. $4,500 made it completely unreachable. Maybe rich people could afford it, but buying a GPU for that price wasn't worth it for gaming. So most people, including me, just waited. I remember people working in tech stores posting photos of empty shelves where GPUs should be, while miners were buying entire pallets before lunch. I don't know how they managed to do so, but that was the reality. And all of us hoped it wouldn't last forever. We all knew GPUs weren't made for miners, they were meant for gamers. But 2021 showed real human nature. And trust me, the next part will completely change how you see the world if you still think everything is sunshine and rainbows. The crypto gold rush created tons of crypto miners, but those miners created demand, and demand created scalpers. The higher the demand for video cards, the crazier the rules of the game became. Prices went 3x. Miners or scalpers walked into stores and bought 20 to 30 GPUs, and Telegram resellers became richer every day. The craziness went too far, people started camping next to Micro Center before the video card release dates. And when they were asked why they were there, people answered with a short explanation. It's hard to get a GPU online. There were bots and websites usually crashed after releasing a video card on the website. Some of them even admitted that they were going to buy a GPU and resell it to make money, while others claimed they would build a PC for gaming. But it's hard to believe those words. I don't think they were doing it because they wanted to play games. Most of them were miners. They just didn't admit it on camera to avoid hate. And believe it or not, at the time, crypto miners were the main target of hate on social media. And the ones who suffered were the people who just wanted to play a game. Just for comparison, the Ethereum price, the most relevant cryptocurrency for GPU mining at the time, reached its peak in November 2021 at around $4,600, while a year earlier in the November 2020, it was only $500, making it a crazy increase in just one year. And that also pushed GPU prices up. The RTX 3080, which launched at $699, was sold for over $1,000 in the first hours of release. Once scalpers got involved, the prices went into the sky. It's hard to even say the prices of the RTX 3090, which was the strongest GPU in the world at that moment. In some secondhand markets, people could find it priced like a car. Even the RX 580, 470, 570, GTX 1070 and 1080 weren't bad for mining. That's why miners used them all. There was nothing left for gamers to buy at that moment. And that was only in the US and European markets. I didn't even mention the countries far away from the West. Countries considered a second or third world didn't even get a piece of it. But I want to tell you more in that next part because that includes my own story. And it was very interesting as someone living in a developing country. As someone from a developing country, I was honestly one of the unluckiest people trying to build a PC. I started dreaming about my own setup back in 2019, when I was just a teenager. In 2020, I finally began saving money for a GPU. Back then, there was no shortage, shelves were full, and the newest cards were the RTX 20 series and the AMD RX 5000 series. My dream GPU was the RTX 2060 Super. I remember how badly I wanted, it, let alone the RTX 30 series. But by the time I saved up half the amount of money at the beginning of 2020, the GPU shortage started. The once cheap GTX 2060 Super became more expensive every day. It was impossible to keep up with the price, and I started regretting that I didn't buy a GPU earlier, or even think about building a PC earlier. I remember buying a GTX 1060 3GB a month before and selling it because of the low VRAM. I thought it was too low for me, but while I was selling it, I didn't know the situation would turn into this. By mid-2021, I had enough money to build a PC with a GPU if prices were cheaper, but at that 
that time, you couldn't even find a GPU on the market, not even for an expensive price. There were only useless GT 1030s and GTX 1050 Ti's for unbearable prices. I remember missing the old days when GPUs were everywhere and prices were affordable. I had money, but I couldn't buy anything. That was a worse feeling than not having money at all. I even started thinking about buying a laptop which still had normal pricing, but I didn't like the idea of a gaming laptop, and I still don't, but whatever. So I continued watching the news about the situation every day, only to see GPU prices go up because of Ethereum. I thought I would never get a GPU at all, and even thought that PC building wasn't meant for me. With each piece of news, it got worse and worse, but some experts told us to be patient and wait, not to worry about the prices because they claimed this problem was just a bubble like in 2017, and it would eventually pop. No matter what, they said it would end. The pandemic would fade, people would take off their masks, the world would learn how to live with COVID-19, the chip shortage would end because companies would produce more and faster with more workers, Ethereum would go down or become unminable, and miners would lose their power, and we ordinary gamers would finally get a GPU. And you don't actually believe me, that finally happened. So after the start of 2022, this problem began to fade. Of course not fully because Ethereum was still high, but in the summer of that year, Ethereum crushed completely from 4,600 down to 1,000 per coin. That happened because people started selling their coins and the pandemic faded fully in the world. People took off their masks and the world healed from the virus, or at least people learned how to live with it. Factories that produce chips like the Taiwanese TSMC and South Korean Samsung reopened chip production at their full potential. They started hiring new workers or rehiring old specialists, and in some areas they learned to automate certain processes. This global problem taught them how to survive another wave if it ever happens again, and they began producing even more chips. This increase led to a point where scalpers couldn't sell the cards they bought for expensive prices and were forced to downgrade their prices 3-4 times lower than what they paid. Even then people rarely bought GPUs from the secondhand market because people aren't stupid and they know that the secondhand market after the gold rush is like a brothel. I remember monitoring the secondhand market after this and finding a lot of RX 580, 570, 470 GPUs for very very low prices as if they were selling a fan not a chip, but still most people couldn't sell them. The reason is simple. After mining, GPUs are no longer ready for normal use in most cases, because they were used like ho turned on 24-7 at their max temperatures. And I actually saw those RX 400 and 500 cards like that. Cheap, and if you buy them, you use them for 3-4 months at most, because afterward a cheap dump on those video cards was inevitable. But that wasn't the end of mining, because in September 2022, Ethereum transitioned to the new model called Ethereum 2.0, the network moving from a proof-of-work to a proof-of-stake or POW to POS, consensus mechanism, which meant there was no need to use GPU power to make transactions anymore. That's when mining finished completely. And by the way, at that time I had a PC that I built during the shortage, but without a proper GPU. I had an AMD HD7850 with 2GB of VRAM as a temporary solution, and in July 2022, I finally managed to buy a GPU for a really low price. By then I could buy not only the RTX 2060 Super, but also RTX 30 series cards like the RTX 3070 and more, but my CPU was a little weak for those. That's why I bought a new RTX 3060 for lower than the manufacturer's suggested retail price. That was a real sigh of relief at that moment, as if I achieved something, even though all I really did was save money and be patient until the prices dropped. And looking back at all of this, it still feels unreal that we actually lived through that era. The chip shortage, the mining boom, the scalpers, it was one of the craziest moments in tech history. And if you were a gamer or a PC builder back then, you definitely felt that pain. It changed the industry, it changed how we buy GPUs, and honestly, it even changed how we think about tech in general. But it didn't just leave us with bad memories, there was also a downside. After all of this, GPUs don't feel like a dream anymore. When I was a kid, I used to lose my mind whenever I saw that green Nvidia logo. It didn't matter what kind of card it was, but that excitement completely died in 2021. It's like the shortage pushed my PC building hunger to the max, and then suddenly dumped all these GPUs in front of me like, oh, okay, pick whatever you want now. It doesn't feel magical anymore. I have an RTX 3060, a literal monster for 1080p gaming, something my childhood self would have cried for happiness for, but now it doesn't hate the same. I even bought an RTX 5070 recently, and when I saw it on the store shelf, I just went, nice, no butterflies, nothing. But I guess that's life. Every period teaches you something. And for those of you who stayed till the end, I want to quickly mention my new ebook called Build Your Own PC. If you're confused about choosing PC 
parts or you're thinking about buying a pre-built or even a console, just wait. With this book, I'm 100% sure you'll know exactly how to research, compare, and pick the right components for your future PC. The ebook explains everything in a simple, beginner-friendly way. I wrote every chapter with real examples, clear explanations, and quick conclusions, so we always know exactly what to buy without getting overwhelmed. The link is under the video, and if you watched all the way till the end, thank you so much, take care.